be received from the waters of baptism. St. Prochus, he is the bishop of Constantinople, he was born in the 300s, spoke about the great feast days of Christmas and Epiphany leading to the Lord's baptism. And this is what he emphasized. He appeared in the world, bringing beauty out of disarray, gave it luster and joy, bearing the world's sins and crushing the world's enemy. He sanctified the fountains of waters and lightened the minds of men. On the feast of our Savior's birth, the earth rejoiced because it bore the Lord in a manger. On the feast of the Epiphany, it is a sea that is glad and leaps for joy because it receives the blessings of holiness in the river Jordan. At Christmas, we see a weak baby giving proof of our weakness. And at Christmas, Jesus, our King, puts on a royal robe of his body. At Epiphany, the very source unfolds and clothes the river. We're called to see new and astounding miracles the Son of Righteousness washing in the Jordan, fire immersed in water, and God sanctified by the ministry of man. Today every creature shouts a resounding song, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in every age, for this is not his first coming, and has been here before. He then quotes King David, The Lord is God, and he has shone upon us, Isaiah then quotes the Apostle Paul, The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all and instructing us. To the Jews and Greeks alike, God bestows salvation through baptism, <coughs> offering baptism through a common grace for all. Bishop Crophius then proclaims, Come, consider this new and wonderful deluge. Listen to his words again. Come to this new and wonderful deluge. The bishop is trying to emphasize the importance of the baptism of waters as refers to them as a deluge, calling it greater and more important than the flood of Noah's day. He then makes a comparison of the waters of destruction and the waters of life. He compares the waters of the flood to the baptismal waters to remind us that the waters of the flood destroy the human race, but the waters of baptism calls the dead to life, and by the power of the one who is baptized. In the days of the flood, the dove with an olive branch in his beak, foreshadowed the fragrance of the good order of Christ the Lord. And now the Holy Spirit coming to the likeness of a dove reveals the Lord's mercy. And I think this is a powerful analogy of the birth of the Lord, the epiphany of the star, and the baptism of Jesus. Three very powerful feasts emphasize the importance of who Jesus is. At his birth, he's recognized by shepherds. The rising of the star, he's recognized by kings. At the pouring of water, he's recognized by his heavenly Father, bring to light to everyone present that he is the Son of God. On all these feasts, the Son of God is revealed to the world, and the angel will announce the star and reveals, John the Baptist proclaims, the voice of heaven proclaims that Jesus is the Son of God. The doors are now open for everyone to witness the mission of Jesus. On the feast of our Lord's baptism, not only is the beginning of his ministry, but is the beginning of the life of the church. Everyone begins a new way of life after being baptized into a common faith, becoming members of a common family, the family of God. In the first reading from Isaiah, the Lord God says, Here is my servant, who I uphold, my chosen one, with whom I am well pleased, on whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, for the Lord God has kept his promise. He will grasp us by the hand. In other words, he will lead us by the hand himself, having sent his own Son, who will walk among us, bring light to the nations, open the eyes of the blind, and freeing those who live in darkness. So the Lord invites everyone to the waters, who are thirsty, or without food or money. Come to the waters and receive life, and all that was intended for you. Jesus calls each of us by name in the sacrament of baptism, just to receive a new name as we become a person of faith. We pray that the beauty of this sacrament reminds each of us the power of these waters when poured over us and the new way of life that we are entering. So as we receive the waters of baptism, we invoke the names of the Holy Trinity. And so too shall we invoke the names of the Holy Trinity and we include with the sign of the cross as we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Amen.